Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and my pleasure to call down here at Avondale, Arizona's Phoenix Raceway as the Spartan Logistics Management LLC iRacing iRock Series are here now to take shape and take aim down on the mile-long dogleg style track. I go and I am the Crusader, Christian Shriver, joining you tonight as we are presented in part tonight with the showcase of the drivers and the battles of Rage On. This is presented in part by our good friends over at Spartan Logistics Management LLC by R&R &R Racewear. By Loud Pedal Gaming TV, smashing the loud pedal for your viewing entertainment. By SimSpeedShop.com. By Track Time Entertainment. And by Five Star Graphics. A huge thank you from the iRacing iRock Challenge Series and from all of us here at PT Racing TV. We're getting ready to get down to the action here right now. Phil just kind of finishing up warm ups here. We're going to have ourselves a bit of a hot-headed, hot field here with these drivers in this line of sight today. But the one thing that they want more than anything is not just to get to the top of the mountain in the points list. It's to be the top of the mountain in the playoffs points. Here's how we're going to get there today. You can see right already that drivers that have got the yellow line marked in and everything, they are locked in. They have completed everything. They've done everything they needed to. They will be locked into the championship points for the 16 positions. Now, everyone below, though, they're still in contention, still have a chance, but they've got a lot of work to do, and they're going to have themselves a lot of areas to cover. So Mike Harper, Hunter Clark, Matt Cobb, Dakota Clark, and Kevin Cam, they need to get something figured out ASAP if they want any chance to make it to the big playoffs race here in just a few, few short weeks. 
But now, race fam, the time's come. Presented in part by R and R Enterprises, R and R Racewear. Let's take a look at a starting lineup today here on the track. On the pole, it's Chris Mefford in the 46 is outside. Brandon Mefford in the 83. Runner two, Aaron Smith will be in the number one is outside. Brian McCann in the number three. Runner two, it's gonna be Troy Bradford in the 94 is outside. Neil Quick and piling in the number two. Row four seats Brian Rose in the 89 is outside. Cody Harger pilots the 66. Runner number five, David Brown there in the number seven is outside. Matt Kopp, the 22. Runner number six, Tim Schofield in the 12 is outside. Well, that's Vincent Short. He'll be driving up in the number 15. Runner number seven, we're going to see here. That's going to be Cook Quick in the 54 is outside. The 82, that is Carson Conway. Runner number eight, it's going to be Chris Walling, the five is outside. Paul Buzel in the uh, number nine. Row number nine is Jeff Napier in the 40 is outside. That will be the number four of Mike Harper. Row 10, we'll see Hunter Clark in the 18, who is outside being Ray Radford in the 47. Final starters, row 11, Ryan Reich, the 112, Dakota Clark, the 38. Round out the field, round out your series of drivers, and set for tonight's action here as we are about to get settled in to the hard racing that lays ahead for these drivers on this mile-long Phoenix Raceway. Field set in motion here. Field ready to come on by down on the cross track here. Everyone rocked it, readied, and rolling them on out. It's time to bring the hammer down here at Avondale. If you fans are ready, we're ready too. Let's head it down here. Phoenix Raceway, get prepared. The battle is about to begin. Waiting the green to fly high on the cactus on the cactus tree down ahead of us. Off of turn number four, into the straightaway to the dog leg they go. Green flag is out. It's racing for Spartan Logistics Manual LLC I Racing I Rock Challenge Series. One hundred and fifty lap, one hundred and fifty laps to go here tonight. The sun's starting to fade off a little bit. Late afternoon skies here. It will be turning dark here in about a couple hours. So as the drivers kind of get a little bit further into this race, a little bit further into this run, you'll definitely see a little bit of a change up. As much as you'll see a little bit of some bumping and banging here. A little spin off with number three as he tries to get that Spartan Hooter style car to slow back down. Couldn't quite get it to square up though. Caution is out. Gosh, coming right in front of the lap, tra of lap traffic as well as of the pace car here. So that will uh, slow everybody down back into position here. Let's take a look at the PTM instant replay tonight. Presented in part by Sim Speed Shop. There's a couple ways you can look at this track. You can look at it as a, basically a tire wear sanctuary where you're trying to save your tires and save your car up as much as you can. And then there's also the uh, overwhelming issue of just trying to avoid the bump and runs as much as you can. And with these next-gen cup cars, that certainly has been a moniker here. You see that little bump tag there, unfortunately, kind of entering into that turn. And that's all it took there to get that car loose. Wasn't much he could do about it. Wasn't much he could get out from there. One last look at it from the top cam here. Brian McCann, man, not normally known as a guy that loses control too often of the run, but in this case, because of that little toe tap there by the number 34, followed it up here. Ends up kind of getting him sideways, long ways, and every which way to Sunday, costing him plenty of time there, unfortunately. That's going to be a tough break there for him and the crew. 34, by the way, is actually the 94. That's Troy Radford. I misconcepted. It looked like a 34 on the top of the hood there, but it's actually or top of the roof, but that's actually just a 94. So my apologies. So field coming back around here. Everyone getting squared away still at the moment. And I guess I do know my delay, low relay system is a little delayed. Be aware of that today, guys. I'm still working out the kinks on that stuff. Not really sure what's going on with it. So one thing we can now go ahead and take a look at though here is our track tech talk for the evening here. Let's take a look at that now as it presented part on your screen. And really to me this this whole scenario, this whole scenery is going to be a bit of a handful for some of these drivers. This is a unique setup, a unique style track here. Now, just on first impression, you would have thought this is a trapezoid mixed in with an oval, which I don't blame you there, but actually what it is is that first turn there you see in front of you, 
that's actually the dog leg turn that actually can build up a little bit of an interesting get up. You can drive it normally and conserve your tires and conserve the steering in it to make sure you don't overdo the corners or overdo yourself. But there is one little hiccup though, and that is if you take down the bottom lane, you got a lot more speed and a lot more momentum to build up back around to entering into the actual turn one into turn number two, which is right here where these drivers hit up. So really you got a couple angles, a couple areas to work around, but if you can time it just right, that bottom run on the bottom lane there will be key in the masterful to hang in with this one. Driver starting to get squared away yet again here. Coming down on the back straight away here. The actual back stretch leading into turn three and the actual turn four. Notice there's not five turns on this track, although you can probably conceive that dog leg is one. I personally do not. I personally look at it more as just a uh, kind of a little roundy, a little roundabout turn there. Hope you guys are doing well here on Beats Racing TV as well as down here in Phoenix Raceway. Here I know a lot of you folks down here in Avondale wanted to see some hard racing, some good battles here. And I think these Spartan boys will definitely have that in store for you. But remember with those three stages here, that could definitely fix things up a little bit. Kind of make things a little bit more chaotic here if they're not too careful. We'll have to see if that comes down to be here though. On the restart here. Chris Mefford, the number 46, will have the early advantage. He's trying to take down the number one seed in this entire season, the number one of Aaron Smith the third. Smith, your reigning, defending next, next uh, excuse me, Spartan Logistics Management Season Champion. Although in this next gen series, though so far, it has not been very kind to him, nor has it been very kind to some of the veterans out here. Some of the rookies have been taking full advantage and full strengthening around here. One of them, for sure, is that number two, Neil Quick, who is right now currently in the throw two slot. His momentum and his speed has been absolutely tremendous this season, and I think more than anything, judging by how he played it out with the 550 horsepower package versus how he does the 670 now, definitely speaks for itself as we get back to the green flag. Right around long roundabout here off of turn number two out of the gate here. Chris Mefford having to deal with some company as his family member Brandon Mefford tries to help him out and get right there with him to put Smith out of contact on a line here. But that's been going out of line out of contact. Problem down there on turn number three. Yet again, two drivers colliding in Carson Conway and the 66 of Cody Harger both connecting with one another. And unfortunately, the Arizona connection is not quite as well as it would be in football versus how it would be in racing but let's take a look at the replay here and see what exactly transpired here take a look at it watch very carefully as they come around off of turn number two you can see already they're pretty close together in a pretty little shot here but the 12 unfortunately slowing down too much for their own good and their own cornering ends up slowing everybody back down Tim Schofield really having nowhere to go and Harger ends up getting a piece of him, and Carson Conway just kind of sent back in with it. Wasn't much he could really do in that angle, and that really that turn. That's one thing you got to watch out for when you're driving around with these cars, is the braking on these things are extremely tough to watch for, and extremely tough to even kind of be conservative with. You've got to really be in on that shot. Here's another look at it with the replay here. And it doesn't look that bad right there, but you can see. Damage-wise, obviously the cars did take a little bit of a hit, a little scruffle, if you will. How will that affect them long-term remains to be unseen, but one thing is for sure, nothing goes unchecked around here on PT and Racing TV. So Tim Schofield, really the guy that kind of started the procedure there with that little break shot there entering in turn three, the only one that came out of it cleanly versus what others have dealt with here and what they had to fight through in this case. So I think that might be a bit of an advantage for him 
However, looking at long-term wise versus long-term run, is that going to be a good substitute for him and his team? That remains to be unseen here. If this is your first time on PTR TV, folks, and on your Facebook end, we'll be sure to uh, like and follow us up here. If you are new to the YouTube side of things, head over to our YouTube and subscribe there. Or if you're watching there, thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, we are watch you'll be watching the replay version as I'm learning currently. We are live right now on the Las Vegas side of things. So here we go, entering in turn number one. Pace cars, lights are turned off now. Driver's ready to get this one right, right back on the momentum and on the pedal, straight down into the metal. Driver's positioned off now, looking for the charge, looking for the run down. 22 drivers have made the call up tonight. Only 20 have made it through the field so far, made it onto the track. Off of turn number three, going into turn number four, looking for the star, looking for the lights to flicker on. Mefford sets the tone, he sets the pace, and he'll set the field straight to the green flag. We charge him high. Field gonna work their way on down around through turn three, turn one and two here past dog leg and section zone. They'll now have to look towards either going towards that bottom yellow of the dog leg or they'll stay above it if they can keep it green here. There is still a lot of drivers getting kind of nosy down there, looking for some positions, looking for some runoff. And it looks like Mefford's gonna go down towards the yellow line of the dog, but it looks like Schofield and some of the other guys actually starting to opt out from it. Not too worried or keen about going too quickly into this here. Remember, going below that yellow line does mean you are tampering the tires up a little bit more because you're shorting the track out, which means you steer into it harder. And in turn, steering in with these next gens ends up slutting down a little bit more rubber, a little bit more onto the scene. There is one positive to doing it, though. Again, it is the overall speed you can get and you can carry through. But a lot of drivers will tell you at point blank, they don't want to go too quickly into that turn like that. Vincent and McCann right now in a hot pursuit and a hot bout here. McCann, after that little toe tap he got earlier on, seems not be phased by it and wants to come back for some sweet revenge. The number three, mounting a charge, mounting the field and got some good runoff here, but can't keep it going. That is the big thing. It's one thing to get a good charge, but it's another to build up a lot more momentum later on down the road here. Lining it back down now, looks like the family members, Chris and Brandon Mefford, now the two Mefords themselves are going to go for a little fight and a scruffle here while Neil Quick watches out from behind Brian Rose. Oh no, look out on turn three, three. Right off turn number two there, Brian Rose way too aggressive and ends up spinning the tires out underneath him. Couldn't get a grip, caution is going to fly out due to this. Well, it looked to me like some things were just not quite gripping the way they should have there. It ends up giving him a bit of a bad break there. We'll take a look at the PT Mr. Replay. He's making a good charge here. He moved up all the way into fourth here for the Holler Boys. And unfortunately, the car, you can just see right there, he braked a little. looked like he was braking a little bit to avoid the two. And once he kind of broke, he saw that rear end. It slid out from underneath him. Couldn't quite get a grip on it. And again, with these next-gen cup cars, that 690 horsepower package, trying to get a grip with this car is literally a lot easier said than done. Let's just say that without getting too creative and colorful. 
Yeah, you can see right there, he was on the brake slightly, kind of entering the turn just to get the car to settle down. Unfortunately, though, he was too hard entering a turn. And he just really could not get that rear end to stop sliding out from underneath him here. And then that little uh, mistake there just kind of drove it <laughs> into the uh, water bar barrels there. Nothing he really do about that, unfortunately. I've had my fair share of hitting the barrels down there. Not necessarily always at Phoenix, but it, it has happened quite a few times at Phoenix here. I will admit that. All right, so position him down on the track here. Still now, a lot of still got quite a few laps remaining. We have only just started this race. I'd say probably one big thing that these cars have kind of shown from in real life perspective versus how they are in the actual iRacing area is that they are very keen to spinning out. They're very keen to being kind of thrown around a little bit. They're hard. They have. They've just got this very hard to really steer off from control. That again really does put into the driver's perspective what you have to do here. have to uh, maybe settle down a little bit maybe kind of get themselves some time to breathe because again it seems like a lot of them are just overdoing themselves over accentuating what the downsides are with these cars rather than trying to focus on the positives which is they can last out for a time or two and they can be very interesting to race against if you can put them right there together with one another but in order to do that you got to get these time He's, he's time to develop and he's time to run with it off of turn number three going down turn number four watch out for the number two and you quick because this man is literally gaining some ground and gaining some drivers up here looking to maybe put them to shame put them on high alert Off restart zone right now, David E. Brown, five spots up just from this start alone. Now has a little company here with that nine of Paul Buzel. Buzel looking to Buzel the field and give themselves a little bit of a headache here when he gets right into there. Puts Tim Schofield up top side here at number 12. Schofield trying to get back down the bottom here, trying to stay in that run. The run zone, without a doubt, is definitely that bottom lane here. Again, this is not a short track, but it is very much an intermediate track. Just in a bit of a different form, if you will. It's only a mile in length, but I think what makes it so good and so tough to really figure out is just the overall differences in strategy. Short run versus long run. Long term run would be something I'd usually do here because I'm just I don't have the speed to really carry through as fast as some of these guys do, but I can definitely tell you is one thing you can do is outpace them and outmatch them when it comes to your tires and your fuel. All it takes is just a little bit of a workaround, a little bit of a keen expertise, and there you go. You're pretty much all set in there. Your current points leader right now, the onboard camera here, only three spots up out of the gate here. Chris Mefford and Brandon Mefford right now just working together as much as they can to kind of keep each other in good harmony and good distance here, both looking for their first win of the season here. 
Chris coming very close a couple times, been in that same boat, same shoe, multiple multitude of times, but Neil Quick kind of outsmarted him or taking him out for a few spots. And not taking him out as in legitimately as a driver, but like actually just outclassing him, outsmarted him into some of these turns are really outpacing the field here when he can get that run going. We wonder tonight if that is going to happen here, especially considering how late and how dark it is. The track temps it will start to change up. The weather will start to kind of figure the track up a little bit. As the track starts to cool off a bit, there become a few tricky spots down there, a little bit of some corner spots where speeds can really be mixed and matched around. Everything can really get harder to handle and grip up with. Uh oh, a little trouble down there with the 82. Carson Conway on the back straightaway comes to a dead stop. We've got a caution. Well, he does refire the 82, but unfortunately, that uh, does not mean the car came out of one piece. He was damaged up pretty bad on the left side there earlier, but now this one's just even worse. This time it wasn't in turn three, though. It was turn two. You saw him overdrive that right in. He actually gets a piece there from one of the guys. Almost <laughs> clips the 40. I don't know how the heck that uh, Jeff Napier avoided that, but credit where credit's due to him. I believe he caught the four there, I think, on the initial hit. Now he got the 23 of Dakota Clark there on that hit. That's where the uh, problem came for the 23, so now he got some damage badly on that front end there. One last look at it here. Watch carefully. You can see he just drives it too hard in. And once that car tightens up too much on you, there's just not much you can do about it. And there you go right there. That's the end result of it. That's a darn shame there, unfortunately, for the 82. Conway not catching any brakes or any breathers here from Phoenix. That's not much is for certain. So let's go ahead and uh, have a look in now at our points race here in the actual racing itself after race 12 of 29 right now things have certainly picked up and the paces have certainly gotten much more difficult for these drivers but neil quick yet again outsmarting and outclassing all those that oppose with him literally taking the top honors in the top spot out of the gate here 15th on back though still in a war of races here of course anyone really in that 12th down on line is in danger of either being put on the bottom of the red or has a chance to stay in the red that is kind of one of the biggest things to really take note of and take keen eyes on watch for those drivers to really be pacing and tempering themselves and keeping a close eye on everything they do here with this race but i guarantee you that a lot of them will not be too focused up there'll be a lot more all over the shot zone if you will and the and entering their turns and hitting their break points just right Now, who would I say probably be the underdog favorite here out of this bunch here? Well, honestly, I'd say probably right now Brandon Mefford is my pick here for that because Chris Mefford, we've seen what he can do before. He's been a hard charger. He's been a hard racer pretty much since the get-go of this season. But for Brandon, he's been kind of living in his family member's shadow here a little bit because he hasn't been making a lot of noise. He hasn't been all over the place or really making some serious headways and head moves he's just been kind of i don't want to say just kind of been there but he's been just kind of there it just hasn't had a full-on break in my opinion so if anything that might change up very much so now with the way he's been playing this one out and you can actually hear him actually clutching that car in right at the moment as he was entering into that turn or as he comes on the straightaway you're probably wondering home why is he doing that well here's the thing with the fuel run they have on these cars, they have still a good 45 plus laps they've got to go under green. So clutching in allows them to pretty much stay on out longer and actually gives them a fair chance here to actually take home a race victory by just basically staying out longer than everybody else. Sometimes it's not just who, sometimes it's not just who can outclass the field, it's who can outpace the field that wins the race.
pace car enters it off off of turn number two as we now reel the drivers back into the green flag restart zone. Green flag is high in the air. We're underway again. A lot of pushing, murmurs, and positions going through in this field right now. Everyone looking for some openings, looking for some shots to take up. The three of Ryan McCann, Spike being literally put back in the outhouse a little while ago here at the start. And the first caution, he has now found himself in the top rhythm, top tap. He's now pushing through. He's in top five territory. Brandon Meffert watching very closely for his brother Chris Meffert here. The family members trying to work with each other as much as they can to keep these guys in check and online. This is kind of a scary spot to be in right now if you're a driver having to watch yourself being pushed, banked, and bumped around a little bit, especially when you're going to go three wide, so and enter in into a turn. Entered into turn number three. Three wide, so never been to short in the 15, the 12 of Tim Schofield, and the five of Chris Wally. Wally not playing any games here tonight. Looks like he's already trying to keep a good distance and a good clean runoff in his points race, points hunt. He wants nothing more than to make it to the championship rounds and the championship battles that lay ahead. But in order to do so, he still got to find a way to keep these guys in line and keep them out of sight and out of flight and out of mind. Momentum starting to swing, starting to get further into the field. Matt Kopp, the number 22, coming right up there with Tim Schofield as well as Brian Rose. Brian Rose earlier on found himself in a bit of a problem max on this exact same turn Cop was in just a little while ago. Overshot the turn, got a little too hard into the corner there. And everything just kind of played out in a little bit of an uneven fashion. Matt Cobb having to back off and then throttle back hard there with Cody Harger. Harger kind of getting in the way there a little bit, squaring him up and shaping him down a little. Facing starting to sway. I can start to feel the momentum starting to really come alive here on all these drivers here. You know, quick keeping a close, close eye on his opposition here. He knows he cannot let them escape that quickly here, especially considering what guys like Brandon and Meffert know how to do, which is work as a team, work as a driver's lineup here. Looks like Chris might be getting a little bit comfortable here. Starting to slow down, maybe keep the tires in check, keep the fuel in check. Doesn't want to burn up the run here. Knows he's got to be on the mark, be on target. The number one of Aaron Smith looking straight side down on the low end of the number nine. Fusel looking to goozle the one though, not let him down off him. Gotta keep him down the bottom, defend. Oh, ho, ho, he's not more just defend. He's literally putting a bumper and a side skirt to him. Look at him just rock that thing right off of turn three. He had a great burst of speed to hold the one down, but now the one comes right back at him. Flying colors here. Shades of Kale Yarbrough here with that number one machine. Literally with the way he drives and the way he hits every single mark. Aaron Smith and him know each other extremely well. And we're getting a piece and a clip of that right here now on Pete's Racing TV. Onboard camera here with David E. Brown here as he tries to watch out for any kind of overturns, over corners here. Doesn't want to get too saturated in with that run. Obviously the draft does help a bit, but tires being affected in more as they go. It makes things much more difficult to kind of keep close cabs on. Man, with a lot of these guys too, I know one thing is for sure, they really kind of keep a, social, a good distance or two between each other if they can in those turns. But the thing is, is that you still have to race out the track and you still have to race yourselves out there more than you actually do takes the car out for a little joy ride or a little, little turn two down out of 985. Looks like looks like Buzel and Brown now are going to have a little bit of a tussle here. Buzel losing all his momentum to Smith. Now it is Brown who has pretty much put everything at him there. He's not giving him much room there, that's for sure. 
Brian Rose after that little hiccup he saw earlier on here is starting to now regain his composure, regain the line, regain the run. First Wally though, seven spots up, hard charging it up with 10, with Fusel getting 10 up on him. Absolute hard charges here, not giving an inch to say the least. Just about one third of the way through this race here, and, uh, and so far yeah, it has been pretty much the all-you-can-eat kind of race buffet show. You got a little bit of everything. We got a little bit of a wreck or two down in turn number three. Had a little bit of a car in shot in turn number two and one. We seen drivers spin them out early, and then we see some pretty good battles going on throughout the rest of this field and the rest of this race. Every single one of these drivers have a story to tell. The only way to know how to tell it, though, is by simply just going out there and putting laps on the track. And race fans, when we come back, we're going to see the first stage break coming up here and see how things play out from there. The action's hot right now. Stay tuned with us here in Avondale. Tonight's race, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you in part by our good friends over at Spartan Logistics Management, LLC. By R&R &R Racewear, the official web store for the iRacing iRock Challenge Series, as well as the iRacing Series and store itself. By Loud Pedal Gaming TV, smashing the loud pedal for your viewing entertainment. By SimSpeedShop.com. By Track Time Entertainment. And by Five Star Graphics, a big thank you from us here at P2A TV and the iRacing iRock Challenge Series for all that you have brought to the table here. Uh, it looks like some holler boys may be trying to holler up a little bit here in Phoenix. I know uh, there's a big party scene down here in this nightlife side of the town. If you're wondering here, obviously we are just about 20 or 30 miles south of Phoenix, so actually the actual town. Not but it's still a pretty cool little name here to get this track here, obviously, Phoenix Raceway. Kind of similar to how you would hear for Kansas Speedway or Kansas City. Although, to be honest with you, I think I might actually prefer the nickname, the name Avondale Raceway, if they ever came up with that, honestly. I know Phoenix is pretty cool and all, and obviously it's a more popular, it's a more popular choice because it's a city it's based off of, but, I mean, come on. I mean, I've always been a fan of calling this, the race town by its actual town name. So, that's that's the way I was always taught in race. Speaking of taught in race, it looks like we got a little movement coming up for that 94 Troy Radford. There's been kind of a bit of a... Got, kind of been a little bit of what we're seeing right now with him. Vincent Story has been kind of just a toe tapper a little bit. He's been putting that front bumper up into everyone's grill tonight. He's not letting anyone forget it. And Vincent Short, though, way off target and way off the line of the brake zone. He lost a lot of momentum just doing that right there. Had to back off, check it up, get it squared away. Got it up and running again, but unfortunately lost all that power and all that run. He was building a course there. That hurt him big time there. That gave him a lot of troubles. Him now in the 12 with Tim Schofield moving down on the lower end here. Cook quick in the 54. Even he missed the break point. Yeah, that's something too. You just you've got to be careful about. It. You can't over under those brakes. Those brakes will not take very kindly to it. And they're struggling right now a little bit with that end. Neil Quick really kind of pacing himself around the track here. He's not trying to make too many moves or make too many big loops here. But safe gag won't be set for Brian McCann. The number three driver, unfortunately, yet again, turn number four, bites another one, and he gets bit by it. He tried to hold the line down, unfortunately, though, with one number one of Aaron Smith right there in his line of sight, in his line of power. Ends up making him really think about this one just a little bit. Smith trying to gain some composure and gain some runoff here yet again as he continues to fire hard off. He's just been such on the ragged edge and such on the controlled meter here. Yet he started third. And he actually went down into the fourth place spot. 
I don't know, maybe that's just kind of a testing of what this car can do when it comes to long run versus short run, but there is a little bit of damage on that right side there. may not look like it much, but take a look at the right corner there. You see that little key frame there? That actually is vented in down in there, which is where the, uh, which is where the air traps, as I call it. I don't know the actual name of it, but it's the air flaps to help the car not flip over and get too crazy here. That is what is designed to actually kind of hold these things down to the ground, hold them more on charge and more and more and more under control. Basically, what it does is the airways kind of float around, actually suck in through the car. So instead of actually like raising up, it actually raises down to help kind of push the car back down to gravity and back down to rotation here. I see back in the older days when that number one though was the actual Kara Yarbrough car, that was the complete opposite of what they were thinking back then. They were thinking just leave the cars alone, just drive them as stock as possible. Not the case anymore, obviously, but it still is pretty cool to see that these uh, these next gen cars definitely do resemble a little bit of what their actual counterparts resemble. I've seen the actual Ford Mustang that these cars are based off of, and I'll tell you one thing, I I am dead stunned how well they look and how actually clean they do I just wish I could see the actual next gen car in real life much less on a racetrack racing but now I think in due time I'll get that wish a little battle coming off down the back straightaway here the number 54 cook quick here I'm starting to regain some ground to regain some composure he's been struggling though through that corner here at turn four He's trying to figure out whether or not he wants to go a little harder in or he wants to go a little softer off. Schofield, though, showing you that the line of play is definitely, without a doubt, driving as low as possible. Not going to take that too well, though, does Cook Quick. He gets a little bit of a charge looking at entering in harder to turn number three, but, but Schofield was waiting for him. Oh, that's a short. Easy down there. Easy. Got a little too aggressive there into that turn. Couldn't quite catch it online. Feel kind of pulling the reins up a little bit. Chris Walling, the five here. Coming right down on the edges, on down to the turns here. The 12 of Schofield now moving into the distance. Looks like Wally might have some problems here with the tire set. Looks like he might have cooked them up a little bit. It's one thing to fry the tires up. It's another to really watch out for, let, for what lays in wake. About just under 100 laps to go here, obviously. And now things are starting to take more of a bit of a fight here a little bit of a turn for the better or maybe for the crazier depending on how you like to look at it here while well, I passed in by Schofield Schofield digging a nice little corner exit off there and a good pass as we look back up front though we've got ourselves a war going on between the 89 of Brian Rose and the 7 of Mr. David E. Brown Troy Radford looking on from the wings below Brian Rose, great pass there off of the turn number four. He actually clutch clears the seven clean as day and clean as a picturesque can be. Like I said, Brian is no slouch. You saw him earlier on up in that top four half there. He was running this thing into the ground. He actually had a good momentum boost or two off it. But unfortunately, he found himself in a bit of an uglier situation when it came to getting a little bit too hard into the corner. And again, I think that's just kind of a lack of experience uh, due to a lack of uh, intercepting with these turns and these cars because, again, that spindle and on those tires and on those, on those steering ends here, they're extremely difficult to hold down in charge and in line because, again, they're designed more as kind of like a quick, like snappy rotation spot versus what you would normally feel in the uh, super late models where you would feel on anything else. And that will result in our halfway caution now. The stage break has been engaged. Stage number one complete. Chris Mefford, Brandon Mefford, Aaron Smith, top three. They will gain some points for their troubles.
So a bit of a point stay here for some of these guys, giving themselves a little bit of a help to kind of keep up in the charge, kind of keep up in the position here. Now again, though, it's one thing to be hitting it up as quick as you are now, but you still have a lot of work to do to mix and manage and, ma and really travel down this track side here. So while the drivers go into pick road here right now, get squared them away. Now let's get everyone fielded back in. We'll be right back after this quick commercial message. Tonight's race, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you in by our good friends over at Spartan Logistics Management LLC. By R and R Racewear, the official web store for iRacing merchandise as well as the iRock Challenge series. By Loud Pedal Gaming TV, smashing the loud pedal for your viewing entertainment. By SimSpeedShop.com. By TrackTime Entertainment. And by Five Star Graphics, a big thank you and shout out from all of us here at PT Race TV as well as the iRacing iRock Challenge Series for your support. We certainly cannot do it without you. Coming off pit road, ooh, bit of an interesting change up here. Brandon Mefford takes top honors here from his family member Chris here, so... Now it appears the shoe is on the other foot, and the number 46 is looking to try to play catch up here with his teammate and his family member. So I feel going to kind of stretch their way on around town, get himself squared up a bit. Guys like Jeff Napier looking to try to build the momentum back up out, learning what they've learned from stage number one. And they're going to stage number two, though. This is where things start to pick the pace up. Things start to get a little bit more hectic down here. They'll have a little bit less laps to work with and a little bit more time gained to have to fight off with. Which in turn can set up for that big push, the big runoff on the final legs of the race. The final stage is where everything starts to get very compact and very hard, at, hard attitude kind of style racing. You could say back in the day it would be like the attitude era stuff. Cars now off on turn number two here. Let the action commence again. It is time, race fans, as we enter in. It is going to be a serious showcase and a tight corner exit here. Look for the runs, look for the battles. It's time to enter in to stage number two of the Spartan Logistics Management LLC iRacing iRock Challenge Series here at Phoenix Raceway. Swing them on by, give themselves some breathing room and some time to go at it here. Every one of these drivers just doing their own little thing, kind of staying up on the charge, staying up on the paces here. The nine of Paul Buzel right now looking to goozle up a little bit more. Trying to stay in charge of the field and trying to stay in charge of himself as he spins it though. On the dog leg turn. Lost momentum all out of control here. Matt Kopp as well collected in with him. 
There is no caution though, not in front of the leaders, they will, or nor in front of the back there, they'll let them keep going. They're gonna let them ride this one out, let them ride the race. Cobb though and Buzel definitely not gonna be too happy about this one, especially considering that both drivers were in a hot brigade. Just try to make it back to the field, kind of make it back on the charge. Buzel did a good job there for a while, really showcasing some of his talents, showcasing what he can bring there. And it looks like maybe the car either just got the better of him or he just got the better of himself. It happens to the best of us, so don't don't think for one second this can't happen to any of us out here. Believe me, I've led races literally with like three seconds ahead of the field. The next thing I know, my car just completely swayed up one way and I lost it. And the next thing I know, I lost my lead. It stinks and it is very hard to really get over, but believe me when I say it, it can happen and it will always happen eventually. On board camera here, Troy Radford as he continues to stay ahead here. Brian Rose and Chris Wally behind him, but having to fight it up there with the seven and the two ahead. Neil Quick and David E. Brown, man, they are looking towards every angle, every spot they can to keep themselves in a nice brigade, a nice sh shootout little spot. For the single file car draft, though, this kind of reminds me, would think of the 550 horsepower package that they were working with for the longest of times. Now having to switch it out to that 670. Seems though everybody's got the same idea and the same mindset here. Obviously, they know they've got to really adapt to the long term and adapt to the fuel run here. Not say it can't quite get things kind of more cleared up more on the track here and on charge, but it certainly is holding down this one. The number one here of uh, Aaron Smith going topside. He's the first run. He's the first time we see him be able to try to take the Mefford boys on face to face. If he could get one rung on on the boys six, he might have a chance here to get to the 83 of Brandon Mefford. Problem though is, Chris is blocking the bottom lane because that's where he wants to drive it off from. But at the same time, Meffer can't get a good runoff on the outside because the one is kind of slowing him down on that bottom lane. Blocking top side means you can't get the car to really increase the RPMs and strengthen the speed of the momentum. So the one knows this. What Smith is doing is extremely genius as much as Mefford is ge doing is genius, but unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily translate to success here long-term wise. Brand slowing up a little bit here. Might be catching himself just a little to keep himself under control and keep himself into the, ad the adaptation of what that lies ahead. That's one thing that I always have said before and I'll say it again. It's just you cannot be a true winner. You cannot be a true skilled driver if you cannot learn to adapt on the fly in these races. There are just way too many things that change up in your field and way too many things that get crazy down on that search. You've got that weather temperature, you got weather, you got temperature of the track, not just also in the sky, but in the atmosphere. You've got also the car temperature, the way the car, well, the power of this is set, the fuel, the fuel lines being used up or the gas lines being used up too much. Not to mention also your engine power being a bit of a handful to really rock off. It, it, there's so many things and varies, variables that make racing, in my opinion, so darn interesting and so darn crazy to begin with. I've always said, I was two things I always focus on when I'm racing. Number one is just keeping my car clean. And number two, making sure I don't make the oil temperature and all that pressure go way too high in the upper limits where it ends up burning into more of the fuel, burning into more of the engine as well. If you mess that cylinder block down there and you hurt everything around it, it's going to cost you dearly because then you really have no car or anything you can use. But not only that, keeping the tires clean, keeping them, keeping them nice and fresh and a little bit under the rubber end, not burning it up when you don't have to, staying focused, you know, that eh, there's just so many other things there. Of course, many drivers will tell you like, well, I mean, when you start to burn up, start to get into a bit of a handful, or a little bit of a scrap heat, then you just got to start using uh, your car as a weapon. And yeah, you can use it as a bit of a weapon, but we don't consider it really racing as an actual weapon. It's just a joke. An actual weapon would be like just taking that car right into the driver and just taking it straight to the shadow realm in a wrong form, if you will, not the eye racing form. I've seen it happen before, though, where drivers there, sometimes their eyes just look at the better of them, though, and that will happen. So don't think for one second it doesn't just happen in iRacing, and it's not just your IRL either. 
It's both ends here. Jeb Schofield still keeping the distance, keeping up the chase here. Chris Wally here looking for some momentum, some charging. Aaron Smith and the number one right now switching off with the 46 Chris Medford. He went top side, now he's bottom side. Medford is looking to keep his family member Brandon in a serious, helpful area because right now he knows that one wants nothing more than to ruin the family moment. Brandon looking for all the points he can get. He needs every single one of them. And we'll take a look at that points race yet again in just a minute. But there's something to really kind of note of here as well as with the all-star race coming up. We are one step closer to the edge of it as Neil Quick, Kevin McCann, Troy Radford, Aaron Smith, Chris Mefford, Brandon Mefford, Brian Snare, Brian Rose, Cook Quick, Brian McCann, Tim Schofield, Cody Harker, Chris Wally, Vincent Short, Kyle Pengraff, Doug Wysocki, Jeff Napier and David Trembley with David Brown. They are all eligible for that all-star race when we get to it. Of course, with this being race 12 of 15 here before the playoffs begin, that really just means one thing. Time is starting to evaporate and losing a lot of momentum. It's not going to help your cause any for the next go. Go heat, if you will. Charlotte Motor Speedway is next week. And then after that, it's down to Talladega, where I'm very interested to see how that one plays out. We'll take St. Paddy's Day off and return with the All-Star Race in Vegas. Of course, then after that, it'll be down in New Hampshire. And, of course, after that, Nashville Super Speedway back on the list. And that's the first time we've ever seen the next-gen cup cars there. So, I won't kid you guys. I'm very excited to see what happens with those cars there and what what they kind of bring to the table, what they bring to the to the gut sanctioning area. Now it looks like Rat Traffic is going to be a bit of a trouble for some of these guys here. Ray Radford passed on by there, unfortunately, number 47. Field looking to try to gain some more hard charges and hard runs here as they start to move the field in deep and down inside the rounds. Onboard camera here with Jeff Napier. You can see as well just how much movement these guys are getting inside there. Those things are just bobbling ahead and around in that car. Allows them to breathe, allows them to stay under control and not have to resist too much of those G-forces, but it definitely at the same time can be a bit of a stretch and a little bit of a scary situation once you get into that kind of a wreck, that kind of spot there. Moving right in though, look out for that 89 here. Brian Rose looking to put David E. Brown into a bit of a scruffle here. David knows he can't make any errors, any bottles here, or the 89 will catch him. He's a holler boy for a reason. He can holler it all day and he can charge it up all night. Look at him swing it down low. Says, hey Ben, let's see where this one can go. Hanging in right up there with the seven to David Brown. Brian Rose. Looking for that sixth place position. Coming down off turn number two here. He is keeping some major ground, major position in on the runs. Stabilizes it. Got to hold on a little longer. He knows the run will not come up top side. Brown will block it. So he's going to have to use the dog leg to go straight down lower on the bottom end and hit it harder into the straight. That's exactly what he has to do. He saw that perfect timing maneuver there, and that is what he will keep doing if it means getting just a little bit more of a charge. But the problem is, in turn two, David Brown has the advantage, driving up slightly higher off the exit towards that wall, allows for the car to go from a curved end to the flat bank surface. The flat bank surface is pretty much then what allows for the car to straighten up and gain more speed and composure. Mefford here a little bit of problems down there looks like he got sent back into the fifth place spot I'm not really sure where this transpired out what happened here it looked like he might have had a little bit of trouble on the dog leg I'm not sure here we'll have to go take a look at the P10 instant replay real quick you can see it right there Brandon oh yeah he caught a little too much of that apron there nice save though Kept it at least on all four wheels, didn't spin the car out. As we've seen so many drivers do before him. 
stayed under control and stayed under pressure. That's exactly what he had to do. But unfortunately, I think that may have cost David Brown some momentum because really it slowed him down to where he had to back off and let loose so the 89 then could take over from him. They're really impressive here off this last minute runs and off this last position battles here. Troy Ratford now even making his statement in banking known. Coming down low on the inside. Brown had to slow up again. Ratford, man, he's doing everything he can to just try to get back up with the field. He started fifth tonight. He's currently in seventh. He had a pretty solid car out of the get-go if you if you don't count the fact that Brian McCann and him kind of tangled with each other down into the turn number three there. But there have been a few tangle-ups there on that turn. So that's no surprise to say the least for me anyway. to get the speed and battered up a little scraped up number 94 ahead of the really scraped up and destroyed down number 89 of Ryan Rose. Ryan Rose got more damage on that front end and on the side skirt than might be what's affecting his aerodynamics to run the car seems to be losing a little bit of speed seems to be kind of slowing up a tiny bit now you're really wondering at home what caused the car to lose speed or lose momentum well Remember what I said earlier about the two key factors I always focus on, which is just the track and as well as the, keeping the car clean? Well, that's the reason why. If you want to keep, keep that car clean, you don't have to worry about literally losing speed or momentum because the car actually has time to pace around and it's able to actually stay more under shard and more under the control and speed zone. With the way these cars are designed up and everything, they have got to keep... A nice consistent airflow around the curved end and surfaces. Otherwise, that airflow and the aerodynamics get completely holstered and bolstered to the point drivers cannot keep these things online. Or they cannot get as much speed and momentum as they may have had once before. change here once again here still field moving on down closer on in and Troy Radford managing to get a pass on by there will take over this spot Brian McCann Aaron Smith though they are still looking for some room looking for some momentum here Ray Radford, I focused on him a little earlier on there, and honestly, it looked like he might have had some troubles down there, unfortunately, with the car. Seemed to be getting a little bit, kind of, coming out a little bit too hard in the control, and a little bit all over the place there on his end. So far, everything else seems to be okay, at least. 
But really, the main thing I'll say is, is how long longer do each of these cars have under their tires, if not under their fuel line? Because we saw earlier, with when they were even on pacing down around the track, they were putting in the fuel mileage as much as they can to help themselves out here. Moving closer in right now, still Ryan Rose trying to catch back to Troy Radford here if he can, maybe look for some momentum here. Seems to me being a bit over the top, a little bit over on the underside of things can get a bit tricky here for these drivers. And I think that's one thing they've got to watch out for. Random effort, though. I mean, give credit where credit's due, man. Talk about just overall consistency and really pacing the dictation of what Smith and McCann are trying to do to him. They've been pretty much locked and loaded for most of this day today, but they have yet to really make a mistake. And, quite frankly, I'm impressed. I am very much impressed with Brandon. I'm hoping that if he can, he can use this in the final stage, because that final stage there, remember, only 150 laps, and they're already getting into the 100-lap marker right now. You can imagine just how difficult it's going to be when they get really in debt and really have followed along the line here. track right now though Brian McCann trying to get a move off here on Aaron Smith here still seems to be kind of keeping his distance keeping his ties close together he doesn't want to let off too much on him there doesn't want them to get too too in intertwined too keen this one Dan now looks like he's getting a little bit tired of waiting out for this one. Yeah, how far things kind of lay back around here on the track here. You can see pretty much those that have been hurt and torn up a little bit. Obviously can't really risk going into pit road and taking the time to fix that damage out of those cars. Because remember, when you're racing out on this field, racing out on this track, they only have what they brought to the table. There is no such thing as a fast repair on the IROC Challenge Series. You drive what you race, you drive what you brought onto the track. You tear it up, well, that's your own fault. There ain't nothing else you can do about it after that. And that's pretty much what a lot of these guys have been trying to be very, very careful of from the start of the get-go of this one because they knew if they overdid it in the scores a little too much and they got too crazy, they wouldn't have really much of anything to fight off with later on. 
Just over 40 laps remaining right now in this race and may not seem like much, but really it's about a 20 minute gap between one another. And that can definitely make things more difficult, especially considering that that final stage break will put everyone back in line and back in place for a last ditch fight off to the run's end. This is one thing I like though. I do like the fact that we're kind of going from one longer to one middle of the road medium, if you will, to that short run final battle. It's kind of a climactic sequence, you know, if you will. And that's where the most of the points come from. It's kind of an interesting little twist here on how they do the playoffs in the stage racing here today as the yellow flag does fly on out now. Yellow is out. And that is for the final stage break. Random effort. Aaron Smith, Brian McCann will gain points from this one. Everybody else in the field will look to try and pro the hammer down on the track side. But race fans, when we come back, we're going to go to the final stage, commercial free. From here on out, it will be a wild, wild shootout and a battle to say the least. Can anybody take down the efforts and will anyone be able to hold back the charge and the run they bring to the table when we come off pit road somebody is going to take this one to the bank tonight's race ladies and gentlemen has been brought to you in part by our good friends over at spartan logistics management llc by r and r racewear the official web store and merchandise site for i racing on the i rock challenge series by Loud Pedal Gaming TV, smashing the Loud Pedal for your viewing entertainment. By SimSpeedShop.com. By Track Time Entertainment. And by Five Star Graphics. A big thank you from all of us here at Pizza Race TV as well. From the iRock Challenge Series for your support that you brought to the table and brought to these for great fans and these great friends and drivers of this series and of this racing world. Currently getting settled up right now. Currently at Pitt Road, Mefford, Brandon, and Chris each trying to get out of there in time. Oh my. And unfortunately for Brandon, he was trying to outsmart the number one of Aaron Smith, but Smith, just like you saw Kyle Larson do to win a championship, just barely Ekes it out ahead and takes this one away from Brandon. Aaron Smith is going to be your new race leader here. Brian McCann will go into the third slot. Matt Brandon Mefford has to now start in a spot he has not been in since he was working with his family member Chris earlier. This is where things get very, very interesting here on the show. But now let's take a look at that challenge playoffs points yet again. Let's look at this here. Brandon Mefford at the moment is still in the top half so a good finish here he's already got some points to his name a good finish here that's going to help him out for this long distance run this long distance race that will give him a closer chance to staying in the top 16 and then he'll have to try to figure out on the round of eights and all that but for guys like david brown you've seen running really hard so far today this is kind of a fight out for them for their spot they've got to start making some big moves and some heavy and heavy machinery here to kind of stay in chance territory of making it into the final 16. And then, of course, guys like Doug Wysocki, you know, really they just need to stay out on the track and stay consistent and watch out for the likes of Hunter Clark, Mike Harper, and Matt Cobb. Matt Cobb, though, having some problems earlier, certainly slowing down his chances, slowing down his opportunities to strike big when he can. I'd say right now, if you're looking at this points get and looking at this points field, this really is anybody's race, anybody's gain here. So, at the end of the day, only the best will survive and only the best will compete in the final 16. Race fans, pace lights are off on the pace car. We have 35 laps remaining in this race here at Avondale, Arizona, Phoenix Raceways. Race one mile long in track, unique in shape, unique in concepts, and extremely tough to beat out and win on. I'd say things are about to pick up. The number one here of Aaron Smith. 
He's already been a race winner this season. Brandon Mefford still without a win. Brian McCann's done it already before. Neil Quick, well, do you really need me even say anything about him? He's literally been in that top three podium. I'd say probably all of, like, uh, except for two races here in this entire season. He is one of those guys you've got to watch out for when he gets it going and builds speed back up. And right now, he is in a good chance here and a good charge for just doing just that. Green flag back out again. The final stage has commenced. Chris Mefford already trying to get up ahead and back into the fray. Problems already for Brandon Mefford here. He lost too much control, lost too much power out of the gate. Couldn't quite keep that thing online, and unfortunately, I think I may have given him the old broadcaster curse here in this case. The old broadcaster curse of mine has been something that a lot of drivers out there there wish I'd never had invented or came out with. But unfortunately, David E. Brown, bigger problems down there off the back straight. Smack dab in the wall, and he cannot make mistakes like that. Not without closest points races. He's only got three races after this he is going to compete with and complete into. He's got to be careful. He needs to get back on the throttle and back into the charge here if he wants to have any chance to give himself a little bit more of a cushion, a little bit more breathing room. He's not got any stage points, and he's not got any breaks from these drivers here, so he knows any wrong move, any wrong doing will be his downfall entering into these final races. Chris Meffer right now holding the line down. He's in a solid spot here. Obviously, his playoff hopes and dreams are still pretty much in range and in reach. You know, Quick, well, he's already locked in. He doesn't... For all he cares, he could go out literally not even show up the next couple races and just go have a cup of coffee and watch the Godfather trilogy, and he'd still be probably the number one guy on the points for this. That's really how much he's got to his name and how big he has became here with this series. Moving the chains on in, Neil Quick right now has find himself back in once again with the drivers and into the fray of the battle in the heart of war. He knows he can, he must only do right by what he has with his disposal, which is his team and his crew. He's given everything he's got and then so just to kind of work around the track and work around the spots here. Just under 30 laps remaining here and this has really been all about consistency control and everyone else watching their timing watching their tempos here they still have to keep these tires underneath them they can't burn them up too quickly but the fuel run at this point is all set set on stone taken care of that's one thing they do not need to worry about brad thack was saying howdy in the chat here brad good to have you on board here sir good to hear from you looking at the back of the pack right now jeff napier in the 40 here really I think the only guy that's actually stayed out of trouble the entire night, 22 and Matt Cobb, well, let's just say he has uh, caught himself a few bad breaks here and really had some troubles there in for turn number four. He saw him earlier spin the car around, found himself in a little bit of a headway, a little bit of a head scratcher, trying to see what was going on with that thing. And now with that damage on that car, you can see how much he's having to turn that thing in just to get it to turn off from. They just build up so much speed, so much momentum that it's incredible to me that really you're able to kind of hold down that line, hold down that charge as well as much as you have to. Because at the end of the day, it all boils down to a science. Racing is always a science and a create and clever life, creative work. That's one thing we can always agree on here, and one thing we always can really pay close attention to. But I'd say the biggest thing that really we need to be very aware of, very understanding of is that nobody can escape the harsh reality that is 
the craziness of motorsports. It's unpredictable. It's just too out of there. It's too out of control. You cannot predict when something right or wrong will go down. That's why it's kind of a betting man's paradise because it's really, you think you would have all the odds in your favor and all the odds in your shake. Next thing you know, a, green, a yellow flag comes out or next thing you know, someone gets a little too eager for their own good and it takes you for a little bit of a tussle, a little bit of a spin around as we've noted here before. Random effort now caught up there. Brian Rose here, only about 24 laps remaining. Brian Rose trying to hold down the 83 camp. Random effort trying to get it right up there with him. It's looking to take him up a few notches here. The, the Spartan Logistics Management LLC Sim Speed Shop Track Time Entertainment cars right now have been absolutely firing it harder and harder every single lap, every single turn. They certainly do not want anybody, for that matter, to get a break or catch an off switch here. I think that's kind of telling here. I think that's really just kind of the whole point of what they wanted to do. They wanted to see what it would take and what would happen when they get things a little bit closer on the ends here. Let's take a look at our lap time zone here at this moment. And this is the lap differential between the 89 and that 83. And you can see Rose really... He's having all sorts of problems keeping Mefford below and behind him. Again, though, the question is, Mefford driving way too hard into the turns and way too hard into the corners. Because if he is, he can actually rely on that and actually use that to his advantage, that is, Brian Rose. Because Mefford wouldn't even realize how bad of damage was and how bad his car was until it's just too little too late. And there, right there, might be the uh, to kiss of death or the death blow, or maybe not. Here comes Medford down on the bottom. Slingshot right down to the turn. Fights it hard. Fires it quick. Trying to make Brian Rose think about this one. He's going to do more than just making him think about it. He's going to make him question it. He's going to make him really look towards every angle, every little slot. And Brefford has made the run, made his presence felt, and Brian Rose could not hold it back. The field now starting to get a little bit more eager, starting to get a little bit more tenacious. When things get tough and things get around on the track a lot harder to control, that's where it gets very, very difficult and easier said than done to really strike with. Caution flag is out though. Ray Radford with problems down here. Wait a minute. What is going on down here? What has happened to Ray Radford? He's put it into pit road, so he will be out of the race now. But what exactly transpired for him here? Let's take a look at this in this case here. I'm not sure if he lost power, if he may have blew a steering, if he may have blew a power belt there, but. Looked like the car just pretty much came to a dead stop. See him in the way of Aaron Smith here in the number one. Yeah, everything seems fine here. And he pulls it off to the side. He slowed down a bit, yes, but I would not have concerned or warranted that as a caution. Unless the car came to a dead screeching halt, I think really he was definitely off base, so there's no doubt about that. But yeah, I just kind of parked it down there. I'm not really sure what. I'm not really sure or have an understanding of what went down there. May have blew something in the engine. Maybe something kind of gave out. Transmission started leaking some oil. That could very well be the. Uh, I'm going to leave that one up to you guys at home. I'm not sure, but one thing is for sure, Smith, Mefford, and McCann are going to retain their spots here from Pitt Road. Wow. 
little bit of madness here, a little, maybe a little bit of a, a little head scratch here on the track. There does not, the race officials are letting me know there are no fuel lines or anything broken down on the surface or any little liquid spills or anything down here. So if I had a guess, maybe a might have been a steering pinion broke on the number 47 of Ray Radford and he had to just pull it off to the stop here so that way he did not find himself in a bad place. More often than not, that does kind of transpire here. Field is reset, lights turned off. Well, that can only mean one thing now. We're getting ready to get back to the green, get back to the, to the field, and then work around this part of the track. And again, Chris Bedford knows that if he's going to knock down Aaron Smith here, he's got to catch him on these restarts because he will not get a break here from the number one. They'll bring him down the back straight away here. Smith and Mefford once again will do battle. Lockhorns, McCann, Quick, and Radford will all be in this fight, in this fray. The fuel has been taken care of. The two tires have now been put on the cars. A fresh set of good years to use. It goes a fresh set of bad boys to lay it all out. Who will get the advantage and who will be able to strike it big and strike the cord? Here we go, off for corner number four. Bedford had a good start, but he overdrove it a little bit. Oh, speed of overdrove it. The Holler boys have collided in off turn number one. Brian Rose and Vincent Short connect the two connecting in. The Holler Boy connection co collides in. And everything gets squared back to square number one here, unfortunately. Let's go look at the replay. And it looks like actually Schofield starts the chain reaction there he actually drive right into the 89 really had nowhere to go there unfortunately and for Brian Rose man he just cannot catch a break on this show whatsoever watch the 12 diving in season opening that little slip up there though was all it took and the next thing you know Got hit up by his own teammate there in the 15 and the 40 of uh, Jeff Napier just kind of finishing him out. Finishing him out, finishing him off, call what you will. So, we're going to try that again here. Let's get everyone's, let's get the drivers a few laps here to kind of get everyone all squared up back in position. Let them do their pit road stops here and then make sure that they know what they're up to next. I, this is just starting to get crazier and crazier though man they are now looking towards firing up more momentum they're looking at firing at bigger moments and bigger times here
All right, so things getting a bit crazier and a little bit more junked in and a little more taken down for a ride or two, but as we've noted before, all it takes is just a little bit more momentum, a little bit more of a grass on the track, and the next thing you know, we'll be back in business as always here on PT Racing TV. A big thank you to all those that have tuned in on our show yet again, and a big thank you to everybody that comes by and watches each and every one of these shows or comes by just to say hello or catch a little bit of the action. Without a doubt, it wasn't for you guys and your support. Absolutely none of this would be possible, nor would this be any reason even to be able to do. Yeah, from the bottom of my heart again, I really do appreciate it all. We have nine laps remaining here, folks. So now... It's a last ditch effort. It's a last ditch charge. Down the back straight away, there they go. They will give everyone one more shake, one more charge. Nine remain. What will become of these drivers? We have 11 on the lead lap. David E. Brown kind of rounding out that pack. Will this be their final start, and will this be their final rung of the race? We're about to find out. Coming off turn number four. Green flag back on out. Here we go, entering into the set of corners here. Turn number one. Oh, huge problems for the 94. Troy Radford gets way loose there, entering into turn number one. That rear end slid out completely underneath him. He could not get that to grip and get it to grasp. Now the two, huge crossover on the 8-3. Neil Quick to falling back behind. And Brandon Mifford, maybe a last ditch effort, a last ditch crack to try to get to those guys up ahead of him. But it's a little too much for his own good. Trust it right off turn one. He can't save it. It's spinning around. It's all a flag out. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Just when you thought he'd be able to horse the car up and put it into the top half, the next gents reminded him you can only do so much with these things before you have overstayed your welcome, sir. Look at this again. Overdrove it. You can see the front end clip out. The rear end was sliding. He tried to scare it off. But again, with how sharp those steering pinions on, those ring pinions and those things, they will just completely swing you around and get you all over the place here. And that's exactly what happened here. And again, this really isn't just on the driver's end. This is on that car's end too, because again, that steering, that steering pinion and everything to me, yeah, it's something new to try and something to work on. But this right here is what drives me absolutely insane. You see he straightened it out there, but once he turned it slightly in, well, pretty much then, the natural reaction would be to literally just kind of straighten out. That was it. But no, the car wasn't having none of that. It literally, as soon as you turned it one slight bit right, you're on to the right. Wow. Yeah, hey, we're getting closer now to a green, white, checker finish if we go that route. I don't think these drivers want anything to do with it, though, to be honest with you. If I was them, I would not either. I would want to stay far away from it, far away from anything involving it, and let the race play out on its own end, not worry about going towards those green-white checker scenarios.
tension starting to spill over. Tension starting to get a bit crazier down here on the track. Now the momentum shifts. Now it is all about who stayed out at the certain points, certain times. It's who can give the fair shakes and who can run the end off from the beginning here. go three laps remain not quite a green white checkered attempt so that will not count but still three laps to go it might as well say it's a green white checkered question is can these drivers just keep themselves under control and can they back off from overdoing things and overextending it here Coming right off, down, off the turn four. Green flag out again. Will we finish this race? Oh, look at Chris Bedford. He's going to drive extremely hard there on Aaron Smith. Entering in turn number one. He's got a chance. Comes off turn number two. Comes off into turn number two down that back straightaway. The charge coming from the 46 camp. Oh, no. The yellow flag's out there already. No. No. Oh, my. Tim Schofield and Matt Cobb involved. Oh, yo, no. Finch is short. Just could not get that car to come to a stop, unfortunately. Oh, man. Now we're entering into one of our three green-white checkered attempts. But what happened to Matt Cobb and Schofield? Looks like Schofield got into it. Brian Rose again here. And this time he got clipped in with the 22. And they actually got a piece of the 54 there. Now, I'll go ahead and take a look at Schofield's camera here and see what transpired there that started that train. Oh, you can see this time it wasn't, he was trying to get, in, he wasn't trying to, you know, get completely underneath him. He got underneath him, but you saw actually this time the shoe was on the other foot. He got loose, and the car just could not simply hold his line down. That's a problem there for Schofield, unfortunately. And it really just kind of tells you just how much he won this one to really work in his favor this season. But the car was not having it. You see right there, just that little kick out in the back. Got to save there. Good little runoff here. Stayed under control. But as he steered it around, you can see he just did not get enough of it. Looked like the left side got jacked up, actually. Looked like he couldn't get out of the steering area. Looked like the steering kind of locked on him, if I'm not mistaken. Judging by the way the cam camera angle caught his arms and hands there. Wow. Well, green, white, checker attempt coming up.
opportunity to arise, opportunity to come forth and come straight here. Pace cars lights are turned off. Attempt number one of three is about to take place here. For the Lewis Herman coming on board, thank you for coming on board tonight. For the last bit of this race here, certainly do appreciate it. We have ourselves a final chance here. Drivers shifting in gear, shifting on by, to ready to charge this one up one last time. Who will be able to put the pedal down to the middle far enough? Chris Mefford got the better of Aaron Smith on that last run as caution went out. Can Mefford do it again and steal a win? This will be his first of the season. Smith, though, will not give him an inch. Green flag is out. We're going to finish this one up. Two laps remain. Smith going to the outside, and I didn't even realize where the five was at. Where did Chris Wally come in from? Maybe a last-ditch effort, a last gash from that five cam. Maybe looking for the race win if he can get it. A solid points day for him if he can finish this one out. But to the white flag, they come alive. Mefford's got to try to hold this one down just a little bit longer. Mefford has got a chance. Smith, though, and him are just completely dead evil with each other. Side by side, wars out here. Smith loses in turn number one. Aaron Smith lost in the corner one. He's lost all the momentum and lost it out of control. Chris Mefford off of turn three. Now to turn four. For the first time this season, can call himself a winner and takes it to victory lane. Chris Wally, for the first time this season, at last, breaks the curse and goes second place. And Brian McCann, with another field day and a half for him and his team, will go third. But Chris Mefford, after a long, long season of doubt, strategy, and maybe a little bit of fatigue as well while you're at it, finally gets the victory on this one. A shocking move there by Aaron Smith cost him a chance of winning this race out. Something you normally would never expect or think of with him on the track. But this one certainly tells the tale. What a race this was from the beginning to the end. Chris Mefford stayed out on the run. Got the break on the caution. Wins this one. Chris Wally goes second. Third to Brian McCann. Fourth Brian Rose. Fifth to Brandon Mefford. Sixth to Neil Quick. Seventh to Troy Radford. Eighth to David D. Brown. Ninth, Tim Schofield. Tenth, Aaron Smith. That rounds out the top ten in this field here tonight. But what a race, ladies and gentlemen, and what a battle from the get-go. This is the kind of battles in the race that we always come to expect, we always wanted to see, and we absolutely love it when it showcases right here of the best and the finest talents on this track and on this series. Let's go down and take this up there with the drivers real quick. It's time to talk with the top three in this finishing lineup absolutely insane to say the least here but every single one of these drivers gave it their heart gave it their soul and that to me at the end of the day is what it's all about coming away third tonight ladies and gentlemen in the number three give it up for brian mccann here and brian congratulations here on that third place finish and it looked like maybe at a few points here in this race it could have gone your way or your route but sadly the car just could not quite stick in enough into the turns there could have
Yeah, it was a tough race. Uh, at the start, I was uh, trying to save tires, and that didn't work. So then the next stint, I uh, used a lot of tires, and that didn't work. So then in the end there, I was trying to find a good middle ground, and um, that's what I could do. Well, the middle ground ends up still giving you a podium finish here, which, I mean, I think most people would kind of shoot and kill for that around here these days. But, man, you had a lot going on. I had a lot really playing down on the track here. What was it like for you and the team and the crew to really kind of have to work off tire management while also figuring out the fuel mileage here with this track? Fuel wasn't ever a concern uh, since we had that 10 laps or 10, 15 laps, whatever, in stage one. Uh, that allowed us to get through stage one the whole time. Uh, there at the end, uh, everybody went in to get tires, and I kind of had in my mind not to get tires on that uh, last caution, or not the last caution, but the middle of that stage three. Uh, but at the last second, I jerked in, and that was a good call. Certainly was indeed here, but, man, an absolute fight out and a shootout for you and your crew and the team. So with everything put in place, you come away third. Who do you want to thank you for that tonight? Yeah, my wife, family, everybody watching. You for doing the broadcast. Everybody helps on the put on this league and our sponsors. Thank you. For sure there, Brian. Congratulations on a third place finish here, sir. Great to see you back in the podium spots. Brian McCain, ladies and gentlemen, your uh, third place finisher here tonight. Now it's time to take it down here. Have a little talk and a chat here with your second place finisher. And I can at least say the curse is somewhat broken now because we got a podium here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Wally comes away second in the number five and uh Wally, man, you had a lot on your plate, a lot on your mind, but it looked like finally the puzzle pieces were put in place for you to come away with a solid finish here. Yeah, man, how about that? We uh, we had a good run tonight. Um, just had a lot fall in place, you know. There were some guys that had a little bit of bad luck, um, you know, right there at the end, kind of getting themselves turned around and just being in the right spot at the right time. It, uh, it paid off tonight. It paid off for you guys tonight. It kind of worked your way in from the beginning to the end. So I guess there's one big thing I want to ask you here is how were you able to kind of shoot through some of those gaps and shoot through some of these people here as you were kind of looking towards the end? Because it looked like the zones were starting to close off and things were going to get a lot trickier for you and your team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it goes back to being in the right place, right time. Uh, car being pitched. Um in the angle that it needed to be seeing seeing the momentum of where when the guys did break loose you know are they going to go finish going up the track are they going to come back um it was close a couple times but definitely worked out kept the car clean all night and uh came home p2 absolutely indeed you come away p2 and what an absolutely solid day and a half for you and the crew so let's ask you this here sir did you come away tonight with the second place finish for the first time this season who do you want to thank for that yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, I want to thank my wife, um, Casey, for giving me, you know, the time to, to be able to do this, to help run this league and, and you know, dedicate uh, some valuable time there because I know that there's a lot a lot more things that I could be doing around here. Um, to all these guys that take part in this, you know, they are a big asset to this league. Um, you know, we're averaging 20, 22 drivers a week and have done great. Um you know, we, we have our ins and outs with and run-ins with each other, but it's been consistent. Uh, we've got really good drivers in this league, um, and then we couldn't do it without our sponsors. You know, we got Spartan Logistics uh, as our title sponsor, R&R &R Racewear, uh, Loud Pedal Gaming, uh, Sim Speed Shop, Track Time Entertainment. Um, you know, and I'm sure there's somebody out there that I'm that I'm just not thinking of right now. And then y'all do a great job with the broadcast, so. Putting all those pieces together has really built this league up to what it is, and, and we're enjoying it. For sure there. Well, we enjoy calling it and, and all the other stuff you said, as we said before, and I think a wise man once said before, it's all part of racing, man. Congratulations on the second-place finish here tonight, Wally. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Wally coming away second here for this one at long last. But I think an orange driver at long last that's happy to finally visit with us here. He's going to walk away with a W tonight. Chris Metford, the number 46 driver, pulls this one off. And Metford, first off, congratulations on this one here at Phoenix. But let's talk about this corner here in turn number one. You enter in quick. You enter on the low end. Smith is fighting you for everything he's got. He loses it in the turn. At that point, did you just think to yourself, at least I got him off my back. I've got this one in the bag. No, no way. Uh, I was actually sliding myself. Uh, I drove, I wasn't sliding as bad as he was, uh, but I was chasing up the up the track. I'm not sure if he caught that or not. 
Um, but no, that's the deepest we've really drove in all night. And the tires still, I mean, even though they're new, they still had a lot of, uh, a lot of slide, a lot of slick bus on them. Um, later in the run, you can probably get away with it. Um, but just early on, I, I wasn't very good. I'm really just trying to save my stuff. Aaron was, Aaron was on the rail, especially, you know, the first 10, 15 laps and then at the end of the run. So, uh, it was definitely fun racing against them. It certainly was indeed, but I mean, you know, let's kind of look at it from this angle too. If you had a little bit of a, tr a little bit of a trouble kind of driving in deep, when you were able to kind of get straightened out there down that back straightaway here, what was it like really just kind of seeing the pinpoint kind of getting closer to that finish line and then all of a sudden everything just played out in your advantage? What was it like then? It was definitely a little bit of a sigh of relief. Um, I said knowing that I had, you know, a couple of car lead going to the next corner. Uh, only way I was going to get, uh, you know, speed or if I didn't wreck myself or, you know, somebody drove in uh, over their head. But, no, it was a good race by everybody tonight. I know we had a couple of hiccups there early, um, especially on the restart. But once it got going green, the racing was real good. Certainly was indeed, and it definitely played out perfectly in your advantage. This is the one you've been waiting for. It's the big victory for you and your crew. So let me ask you this, Medford, as you're coming away, the champion at Phoenix, who do you want to thank you for that tonight? Uh, I'd like to thank you, Kristen, for the broadcast. Uh, I'm not sure if you had any three wide salutes, but I'm sure we made it interesting there at the end for you. Um, you know, shout out to my teammates, Troy, Brandon, Matt, uh, Doug couldn't be here tonight. He had surgery. Doug, hope you're getting feeling better, buddy. And uh, hope to see you back out here. Um, you know, Aaron, you know, hell of a run. It was definitely fun racing next to you side by side. We raced earlier, you know, five, 10 laps side by side, didn't even touch. So, uh, that was definitely a blast. Um, Wally, Wally had a, <laughs> Wally had a hell of a run. Uh, like I told him, this is the best I've seen him run, especially even it's not a super speedway, which is what he, uh, which uh, what he loves. So. Um, all in all, it was a great race by everybody. It was fun. Um, I think I just blew up. Um, <laughs> I think I did. Um, you know, shout out to uh, Spartan Logistics uh, for sponsoring the series. It's uh, pretty killer that they get to do that stuff for us. So um, it's just it's awesome to kind of race every Thursday and have some fun. Absolutely, and, indeed. Well, and one more thing, and not getting door by Neil Quick. That's the positive part. <laughs> for sure there well nevertheless here it has been a wild day of racing it's been a wild night of action but Mefford uh, to answer a few questions yes we did get a few three wides and specking off you finally got yourself a victory when you needed it most congratulations Mefford and we'll see you next time out here buddy awesome thanks have a good night ladies and gentlemen your race winner tonight Chris Mefford and the number 46 well, race fans, that's all but going to do it here tonight for your action. Another Spartan Logistics Management LLC iRacing iRock Challenge Series. A big thank you again to Spartan Log Logistics Management LLC, r and Racewear, Loud Pedal Gaming TV, SimSpeedShop.com, Track Time Entertainment, and Five Star Graphics for everything again this season. It's been an honor to call this one, guys. It's been a fun time around. We'll see you guys next time when the green flag charges up here on PT Racing TV.